the game that changed chess history forever. Hello everyone and welcome back. So today you will see one of the most important games in my life. It was Gibraltar 2017 first round against Lali Agbalashvili and I am with white pieces and before I will start I really want to tell you the story of this game. In this tournament, I played with my best friend in chess, Grandmaster Ori Kobo, one of the national Israel chess team. And also, last year, he represent us in the World Cup. He's a very, very good friend and, you know, just incredible player. And this tournament, I was with him, of course, in the room. And when we go to the restaurant, before the game, I asked him, Ori, what I will play against the Naidorf? Lali Agbalashvili is playing Naidorf. She's playing it so much, so I'm sure 100% she will play against me also Naidorf. And, you know, he looked at me and said, you know, Nitsan, maybe you will play H4? What do you think about H4 in Naidorf? And I said to him, no, you're joking, Gori. What, what you're doing, man? Why you are uh, need to to do fun uh, out of me? And he said to me, "Let's go uh, back from the restaurant, and we will check in the chest base with the engine. If the engine will said that after H4, um, you know, it's better for you or equal, you will play it. And if." The engine will say that black is better, don't play it. I, I said to him, you know what? Make a deal. Let's make a deal. And we are coming back from the restaurant and we are putting H4 on the board uh, in the chess space with the engine and the engine shows zeros. I must play it. So ladies and gentlemen, this game, I played this line. Let's see it together. E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, A6. And until now, you are familiar with this position. This is the Knight of opening by Black. And now there are a very, uh, you know, several options, of course. Bishop to G5, we have Bishop E3, Bishop E2, F4, Bishop D3, A4, A3, H3, G3, and so many uh, moves. But Ori suggested me to play the move H4. H4, I did it. H4, let's put it with, you know what? I think let's put it like this. Brilliant move, h4, the, the move that changed chess theory. So let's see the game and I will tell you uh, after I will finish this game, what was after this particular game. So h4 I played and you know what? I think in general, in, in sh she wrote in her blank, I think h3, because she was, un, you know, 100% that I if I'm, Touching the H pawn, it's only H3, but no, H4 on the board. And you know, I will tell you that Grandmaster Boris Gelfand, the legend from Israel, and also Petr Svidler saw this move, and you know, I think they were shocked, because it was like, very surprisingly, and uh, really, really few, few players until that moment play uh, this move, I think only in Blitz or Rapid, or in some, you know, engines, um, games but in classical game i think this was um the first time in history and you can check and uh, tell me in the comment so h4 and she played here the move e5 knight b3 and she played the move bishop to e6 until now i think overall it's it's the best maybe bishop e7 nowadays uh, more more strong i think bishop e2 here bishop e6 f4 take bishop takes knight c6 a lot of uh, theory, of course, here, and already a lot of games that were played. 
but you can you can see hit queen d3 if I'm not mistaken and yeah it's it's really really interesting line to play and the point is if you can see that I didn't um, develop my bishop before I play the move f4 right I want after f4 that if he's taking the pawn I'm bringing the bishop in one move um, to development and into the center so h4 it's like maybe an a start to attack in the king's side so after knight b3 he played the move she played of course bishop e6 i played f4 immediately and now she played the move bishop to g4 and this is a very um unusual move i think overall it takes a four makes sense bishop takes of course knight c6 queen to d2 or f3 something around this with with long castle of course and attack the d6 pawn um, but she played the move bishop g4 also i think g6 um, played sometimes i think bishop e2 with h5 around this uh, plan for white but she t she played the move bishop g4 of course attacking my queen i'm playing the move bishop to e2 and now she took the bishop on e2 i think maybe h5 was a little bit better because after bishop e2 it seems like you know we we changed uh, bad bishop from f1 against a good and strong bishop uh, on uh, g4 because now the squares the white squares are very very weak for black this one and this one and yeah it seems like this black bishop is not feeling well and maybe i have some plan with g4 g5 so this point this position i was very very satisfied so he pl she played the move knight bd7 and now i play the move g4 i want to attack with all the pawns as you can see and yeah come on let's do it knight b6 another not so good move i played the move g5 of course and um, just attacking the knight she must go back to d7 and now i play the move a4 uh, I don't know why Chascom is telling that in accuracy. It seems like yeah, it's it's the best move in the position because I really want to play the move a5 and disturb this knight from b6 and coming with this knight to d5, the very very strong and, and active square for my knight. So she played the move rook c8 because she wanted to bring the knight to c4. I played a5, knight c4, and now I played f5. I really want to close. Um, the center for now I will bring the knight to d5 this bishop will be very very bad and the attack on the king side is just you know crashing she played the move bishop to e7 knight to d5 rook c6 and now another very very nice move I played rook to a3 my point that was that I don't want of course to castle I'm, I'm not sure it's not seems right but rook h3 i'm bringing the rook into the game with rook c3 maybe and this is something that i really love uh, to to play with all the pieces we want uh, every piece to do the, the best job uh, that he can so we play she played the move queen c8 rook c3 and now b5 and this of course uh, um, not a good move because you know um just calculate this and you're winning so a takes b6 knight from d taking the b6 pawn knight takes b6 knight takes b6 rook c a c6 of course queen c6 and the rook takes a6 just taking a pawn up and yeah this position is just very very bad for black because this rook on h8 is doing nothing this bishop is just bad and the king what can we say about this king very very sad so she did a castle knight a5 queen c7 and now bishop to e3 we're bringing every piece uh, to the development and uh, knight c8 was played and now i thought to myself okay let's play the move queen c4 just re removing the queens from the board after queen c4 knight c4 and just b4 b5 b6 and yeah the game is just over here of course nothing uh, she can do here and yeah just winning the game absolutely but after queen c4 she played the move queen to b7 and resigned immediately of course i will take this queen be very very happy so this game changed chess theory the first time ever that in the classical game was played the move h4 in night of number six move and yeah i really hope you like this video and subscribe my channel don't forget and one last thing that i want to tell you guys after my game h4 
there were so much games were played in this system, in this variation. Yanni Pomnishi with the white pieces, Fabiano Caruana, you know, uh, Grandmaster, Ori Kobo, of course, Avital Borchowski, also one of the best players in Israel, and Yali Sokolovsky, so much very, very strong players. Of course, you can see, I think, also Gre Gregorio Parin, and you can just check and tell me in the comments who also played H4 in Night of. See you soon. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot of content to show you. Bye-bye.